Hello everyone. In this lesson, we have two main goals. Number one, we will create a new post type for professors. And number two, we will learn how to associate an image with each professor post. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so we want to create a new post type for professors. So the first step is to jump into your text editor. And instead of your theme folder, I want you to open up the MU or must use plugins folder. You'll remember that we created this file named universityposttypes.php. So this block of code creates the event post type. And then down here, this block of code creates the program post type. So if we want to create a professor post type, we can literally just copy and paste this and use it as a template. So copy from the beginning of this comment down to the ending semicolon. But you'll notice that I'm still within the function closing curly bracket. So let's go ahead and copy this and then drop down a few lines and paste it in. And then let's just change it out to be for professors instead of programs. So let's update this comment, professor post type. And then anywhere else we see the keyword program or programs throughout this code, we also want to update that. Now if you're using Sublime Text or Atom as your text editor, I want to show you a trick. So notice if I highlight the word program here, and then if I press Command D, or if you're on Windows, you would press Control D, it will select the next instance of the highlighted letters. Now the cool part is that our cursor is now in both locations. And even though this word is singular, program, and this one is plural, programs, because we've only selected the base of the word program, I can just simply begin typing professor and it gets updated in both locations. Cool, and then we can also do the same thing down here uh, where the word is capitalized. So let's select just the base of the word, leave off the S, and then press Command D or Control D several times until all of them are selected. And then we can just type in Professor. Cool, so that little tip can save you quite a bit of time in the long run. Before we save this, let's be sure to give the professor post type a unique icon. So let's change this from Dashicons Awards to Dashicons Welcome Learn More. If you're wondering how I chose this value or if you want to choose a different icon yourself, remember you can always just Google for WordPress Dashicons. Okay, and then one last detail when it comes to the professor post type, we will not need an archive. For example, there's not gonna be a link up in the header that says professors. Instead, I want visitors of the website to find professors through the related programs that they teach, or through the campuses that they teach at, or through the search functionality that we will set up later in the course. So back in our code, since we don't need an archive for the professor post type, we can just delete this instead of setting this to false because false is the default. So we can get rid of that line. And if we don't need a professor archive, then we also don't need to customize or rewrite the archive URL or slug. So we can also delete this line. Okay, and at this point we can go ahead and save our changes. And now if we jump into the admin dashboard, we see this new item in the sidebar named professors. Why don't we go ahead and create a few new professor posts right now? So add new. Let's name the first professor, Dr. Meows a lot. Paste in some dummy content. And let's go ahead and create another professor. So add new. And let's name this professor, Dr. Barks a lot. Paste in some content. And then let's use this permalink here to preview a professor post on the front end. Uh, but you'll notice we see page not found up in the tab title bar. And that's because we just created this brand new post type named professor that our permalink structure is not aware of yet. So you know the drill, back in our WordPress admin, let's hover over settings towards the bottom and click on permalinks. And all we need to do is click save changes down at the bottom to force WordPress to rebuild its permalink structure. 
And now if I go back to this professor slash Dr. Barks a lot page and refresh, we can see that we're in business. Now at the moment, this screen is using the single.php file as its template. And we can see that that's designed for blog posts, but maybe not professors, right? This information that I'm highlighting now, it doesn't make sense for an individual professor page. So let's create a new template file just for professors. So in our text editor, for now we can forget about this mu must use plugins folder. Instead, let's switch over to our theme folder. And in the theme folder, let's create a brand new file. And the name of this file does matter. We need to name it single-professor.php. As always, I like to type just a bit of test content just to make sure that that's the right template file. So we can see that that is indeed controlling an individual professor screen. So instead of typing out a template from scratch, why don't we use our single-event file as a starting place? So I'm going to open up single event and just copy the entire thing into my clipboard. And then back in single professor, go ahead and paste that in. Let's scroll up to the top. Now if I save this, we see Dr. Barks a lot and the content, but we also see this events home Dr. Barks a lot area. And I don't think we need this meta box at all when it comes to a professor profile screen like this. So back in our code, underneath the page banner div, we see a div with a class of container. And right inside that, we see the div with a class of meta box. So let's go ahead and delete the meta box div entirely. Okay, and now, before we learn how to add a featured image or associated image that represents Dr. Barks a lot, let's first work on establishing a relationship between a professor post and a program post, right? So for example, let's say that Dr. Barks a lot teaches in the biology program. So if I use this edit professor link here up in the top menu bar, what I'm saying is that in addition to the title and the main content field, we would also want a related programs field down here. Now you'll remember that we already set up a related programs field that we used on our events post type. So check this out. If we click on custom fields here down towards the bottom of the sidebar, here we can see that related program field group. Let's go ahead and click on that. And we do not need to make any changes to the field itself. Uh, instead, what I want to draw your attention to is this location box. So at the moment, it reads, show this field group only if the post type is equal to event. Well, now we want to adjust things so that it also displays if you're editing a professor post. Now, instead of clicking the and button to add an additional condition check that also needs to be true, Instead of that, we can use this or feature. So we can say if this is true or add rule or if the post type is equal to and then change this to professor. OK, let's go ahead and save that change. So in the publish box, update. And now if I go back into professors and try to edit the Dr. Barks a lot post, Cool, we see related programs and I can just go ahead and say that Dr. Barks a lot teaches biology and then update the post. And then I can use the permalink to preview the front end for Dr. Barks a lot. Cool, here we see related programs biology. If you're wondering why this already works, it's because we duplicated the single event template. So back in our text editor in single professor, if we scroll down a little bit, Remember, we wrote this code when we were working on our single event PHP file. So first we get the field named related programs, and then we loop through it down here. However, since this is a professor profile page, maybe instead of saying related programs, why don't we change this heading level two element to instead read subjects taught. Maybe put the S in parentheses in case the professor only teaches one subject. Let's say subjects taught. Cool, so that feels a bit more customized for a professor profile. And then if we click on this biology link, on this biology program page, 
we probably want to output uh, any professors that teach biology right about here. Right? We want the relationship between professor and programs to flow both directions. So if we want to make that edit on this screen, we need to jump into our text editor and open single program. Let's scroll down a bit. Here we can see the custom query we wrote that pulls in upcoming related events. And really, we can just recycle this code. So in terms of what I want to copy and paste in order to save a bunch of typing, let's place our cursor at the beginning of this home page events query object. So click here. And then I'm going to scroll all the way down, past the custom query to the end of this while loop. So all the way down here where we have a closing bracket for the while loop and then a closing bracket for the if statement, I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and click right here. Okay, and then I'm going to copy all of that into my clipboard. And then because I want the related professors to be above the upcoming events, what I'm going to do is scroll back up to the top and just right above this PHP section, maybe add a few lines and then let's just paste in our clipboard. Okay, let's scroll back up and let's just start customizing this code. So let's rename the custom query. Instead of home page events, let's call it maybe related professors. Let's change posts per page from two to negative one. So that way we pull in all associated professors. We definitely want to change the post type to professor. We don't need a custom meta key to order things by, so we can delete that. For order by, let's order the professors alphabetically by their name. So let's change this from metaval num to simply title. We can leave order set to ascending. And when it comes to the meta query, remember we have two filters here going on that we used to pull in upcoming events. So filter one, filter two. In this case, when it comes to pulling in professors, we do not need this first filter that has to do with the date being greater than or equal to today. So let's go ahead and delete this first filter. So just select from the beginning of the word array all the way to the comma right after it. Okay, so at this point, the custom query looks good. But remember, we renamed it to related professors. So let's be sure to reference that query name down here in the code. So within this if statement, when we are saying only output this code if the query is not empty, let's be sure to update this name to related professors. And then right within our while loop, let's update the query name here as well. Instead of home page events, related professors. Whoops, and I skipped right over this line within the parentheses of the while loop. Let's also update the query name there. Related professors. Okay, and then when it comes to this while loop, this controls what gets output, the HTML for each item. We definitely do not want to output a div with the calendar circle date, right? That makes sense for an event, but not for a professor. So for the moment, let's go ahead and delete this entire div with a class of event summary. So I'm going to begin here and select all the way down to there. And instead, let's just output a list item with a link. And the text that you click on will simply be the title, right? The name of the professor. And then the href should just be the permalink for a professor. So the permalink. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and see what it looks like. Okay, so first of all, we should change this headline to read biology professors instead of upcoming events. There's Dr. Barks a lot. Uh, but the other thing we notice is that the upcoming events just completely disappeared. So first let's update this title and then I will explain why our events disappeared. So here's the heading level two that reads upcoming blank events. Let's remove the word upcoming so we have an H2 that will say biology or math or English. And then instead of events, we'll just say professors. Okay, looks good. Now let's answer the question, why did our upcoming biology events completely disappear? 
Well, actually, before we get into the explanation of why it disappeared, let me first show you how to fix things. So here's our related professor's code, right? And then down here, this is the custom query for upcoming events. So in between those two things, right after our related professor's code is finished, I want you to call a WordPress function named WP reset post data. So let's go ahead and give that a save. Cool, and now our upcoming events is back in business. So now the real question to keep things educational is what does this WP reset post data function do and why does it magically fix things? Well, it's a bit difficult to explain just with words. So instead, I want you to follow along with this quick demo or this quick example. So let's scroll up to the very top of this file and right above this git header line, I want you to call a function named the ID, right? This is going to echo out the numerical ID onto the page for us. So in my case, I see number 97. You'll probably see a different number, but the point here is that that's the ID number for this program page, right? In my case, that's the ID for biology. Next, let's try to show the ID number for this Dr. Barks a lot post. So in our code, let's scroll down a little bit. Here's the custom query for professors. Here's the list item where we are outputting the title for the professor. So right after the title, let's say the ID. So we can see that Dr. Barks a lot has an ID of 104. Now again, your ID numbers will be different than mine, but the point here is that once we perform our related professor's query and say the post, that's going to hijack the global post object and functions like the title and the permalink and the ID. Remember when we called this the ID function up at the very top of the page, it returned a value of 97 for the biology post. But then down here, that same exact function now returns a value that's tied to the Dr. Barks a lot post. Now the reason this broke our upcoming events section is because down here in the custom query for upcoming events, we are relying on a function get the ID. And in order for this query to make sense and work properly, you and I need to be able to depend on this function to return the ID of the actual page that we're on, right? We are on the biology page. So we want that function to return a value of 97. However, our while loop for the professors hijacked that get the ID function. So now it's set to 104. Hence why this query was broken. So long story short, the WP reset post data, this function resets the global post object and all of the data that functions like the title and the ID return, it resets all of that back to the default URL based query. So the true long story short is whenever you're gonna run multiple custom queries on a single page, 99 times out of 100, you're gonna wanna run this reset post data function in between the two queries. Okay, now at this point, let me remove those example ID numbers. And then also up at the very top, remove this the ID. Okay, and that's actually going to bring this lesson to a close. I know we got tied up on a bit of a tangent in terms of dealing with multiple queries and resetting the post data. Uh, but trust me, in our very next lesson, we're going to learn how to spice this up a bit. So instead of just boring text with the professor's name, we will pull in a photograph of each professor. And we can display that here, and then when you click onto the professor detail page, we can also display the photograph here. And we will learn how to manage different image sizes and aspect ratio cropping strategies. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's keep it rolling, and I will see you in the next lesson.